The Gettysburg Address by Abraham Lincoln Taught by Professor Swagger Gettysburg was the turning point of the Civil War for the Union. Lincoln's purpose at the dedication ceremony on November 19, 1863 was to say a few appropriate remarks. Edward Everett, who had written a two-hour speech, was the key speaker. <clears throat> Lincoln lived in Kentucky when he was first born. Early in his childhood, he moved to Indiana. At the age of 22, he finally moved to Salem, Illinois. And he was elected captain of the Army <clears throat> for Black Hawk's War. After the war, he began to make political ties. And then he moved to Springfield, Illinois to practice law with John T. Stewart. And then in 1844, he practiced law with William Henderson in 1847 to 1849. He was elected to the House of Representatives. And then in 1860, Lincoln was elected president. The audience at the dedication ceremony on November 19, 1863, was intended for the nation, not to mock the South nor to uplift the North, but to show that they were fighting for the equality of freedom and pay tribute to the impressiveness of battle. Four score and seven years ago, our fathers brought forth upon this continent a new nation conceived in liberty and dedicated to the proposition that all men are created equal. Now we are engaged in a great civil war, testing whether that nation or any nation so conceived and so dedicated can long endure. We are met upon a battlefield of that great war. We come here to dedicate a portion of it as a final resting place for those who died here. This we may in all propriety do, but in a larger sense, we cannot dedicate, we cannot consecrate, we cannot hollow this ground. For the brave men, living and dead, who struggled here have hollowed it, far above our poor power to add or detract. The world will little know nor long remember what we say here, while it can never forget what they did here. It is rather for us, the living. We here to we here be dedicated to the great task remaining before us, that from these honored dead we take increased devotion to that cause for which they gave the last full measure of devotion. That we here highly resolve that these dead shall not have died in vain, that the nation shall have a new birth of freedom and the government of the people, by the people, for the people shall not perish from the earth. As Lincoln began his symbolic speech that day with four score and seven years ago, most people would think he is referring to the Constitution, where he's actually referring to when Jefferson writes in the Declaration of Independence that all men are created equal. For the body paragraph, what influenced Lincoln was the dedication that the men had in describing why they are here today. And for the conclusion paragraph, he is referring to how the brave men struggled here and how the slaves are willing to fight for their freedom, but you aren't willing to show appreciation to them. And not once did he mention the Union or the South, but when he mentioned government, he meant all 34 states at that time. So, along with his ending sentence, in the government of the people, by the people, for the people, shall not perish from the earth, shows that we need to make the decision to fight for American peace and freedom. And the biggest controversy that Lincoln had was when Lincoln went to New Orleans on a flatboat in 1828 and 1831. This is because this is his first experience with slavery as an adult. Here's John Hanks' account of Lincoln's reaction on the second trip that happened in 1831. It was there we saw Negroes chained, maltreated, whipped, and scourged. Lincoln saw it. His heart bled. Said nothing much. Was silent from feeling. Was sad. Looked bad, felt bad, 
was thoughtful and abstracted. I can say knowingly that it was on this trip he formed his opinions of slavery. It ran its iron in him then and there. May 1831. The difference... The differences between the Gettysburg Address and the Declaration of Independence is Gettys the Gettysburg Address's purpose was for the dedication at the National Cemetery that day on November 19, 1863. The Declaration of Independence's purpose was to be able to get away from England so they can start a new freedom. <clears throat> And Lincoln actually found something that he believed was not right with the Declaration. When he read the Declaration of Independence, when the saying, all men were created equal, he thought that statement was hollow because of what he saw throughout his childhood and his early adult years. Because that's why he moved to Indiana and out of Kentucky, because of slavery. The similarities between the Gettysburg Address and the Declaration of Independence both was a birth of freedom because it gave newfound hope to the colonies as it did the Union at the time. And Lincoln's purpose was trying to, his whole presidency, he was trying to keep the states together instead of tearing them apart. And there has also been multiple copies of the Gettysburg Address. This is the hay copy, which it shows his changes that he made throughout drafting it, which the Nicole copy was the copy that I just recited, and it is believed to be the one that he said at Gettysburg. The hay is the first draft of it, and the Nicole and hay were given to his secretaries at the time. Everett was given to Edward Everett because he stated that he could go on for hours and not get that point across. What Lincoln had said in two minutes and thirty seconds. The Bancroft is also handed out to troops because Bancroft asked for a copy also. And Bliss is actually the only one with Lincoln's signature, and he dated it, and it's the most well-known copy. Thank you for listening to my lesson. Are there any questions at this point? Jace. Um, yeah, like, now I know how you kind of compared it to, like, the Declaration of Independence, and, but, like, Matty had the Emancipation Proclamation. Like, did this Gettysburg Address lead to that? Actually, the Emancipation Proclamation was before the Gettysburg Address. So there are, like, still questions after the Emancipation Proclamation? This was a few appropriate remarks to say after Everett spoke about what happened at Gettysburg. Brittany? Yes, I do believe that all men are created equal because a slave at that time is just as much as a man at that time. It's just we at that time really didn't believe in it. Why do you believe the Bliss copy is circulated the most in textbooks? recited the most, as opposed to the Nicolay copy, which you believe is the one that he was more closely reciting that day mm -hmm. than the one that you recited today for us? Well, the Bliss is the easiest to learn, and it flows the best, and it has all of Lincoln's changes and revisions in it to where it's the best copy everyone knows. So if Lincoln... Had a do-over or a mulligan, do you think he would have went with the Bliss version when he recited it? He actually did not have the Bliss at that time. Correct. If, if he could go back and yeah. do it over. Yes, he probably would use the Bliss.
I would so imagine. That's the only one that he actually signed himself. Yeah, signed and dated. DJ? Was there a like good reason why they named it the hate draft or did they just It's because he gave them to his secretaries at that time. It's her last name. Mm-hmm. Let's talk about the the line A New Birth of Freedom. Can you tell us what you think that means? What did it mean in 1863? What do you think it means for us today? A new birth of freedom at that time in 1863 was a birth of all the colonies back together, is what, or the, all the states at that time. Because of, if they weren't all together, how could they remain a country? And nowadays it's to represent how... The birth of freedom got us so far because really Lincoln's Gettysburg Address is a revision of a shorter version of the Declaration of Independence, I believe. Okay. Sometimes it's really hard for us now to think about how important primary documents were when they were first delivered. Do you have any sense of how widespread or well-known or how popular the Gettysburg Address was after the speech? Well, at the speech, there were, it was packed just to be there. From some of the research I have done, it said about 10,000 were there just to hear the speech. And it spread like wildfire in the north. But in the south, the Southerners did not agree with it because of for one, they didn't like Lincoln, and for two, after what Lincoln did, they thought he was trying to mock them. Are there any portions of the speech that dramatically change or differ between the different drafts, or are they mostly punctuation, grammar, spelling changes? They're mostly spelling changes, but the biggest change I have found is the last line of the body paragraph, which is... This we may in all propriety do. He's changed it to altogether doing so proper that we do this. To where it's worded easier to understand. And if Lincoln could be alive today, what value do you think this is for us if he was here with us? I think he would value it greatly because... He wasn't expecting it to be this popular at that time. But it's grown in popularity since Lincoln's passing, I believe, because of just how Lincoln said it and what was surrounding that time period. Let's give Professor Swagger a round of applause.